Hey guys, it's Jansen here and today we're going to be talking about the reason that so many people start Amazon FBA with good intentions but as soon as they actually do the product research, as soon as they start looking for that golden product, they kind of realise that it's quite hard to do and they give up and move on to something else. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is the number one mistake that people are making when they're doing their product research. And to kind of summarise this video up, it's that people are looking for a product that doesn't exist. They're looking for a 10 out of 10 product that blows absolutely everything out of the water and they're doing the product research and they're kind of finding that those products are very hard to come by, if not impossible to find, and then they just think, nah, I'm not going to do it. So what I kind of wanted to discuss in this video uh, and kind of um, the, the point that I want to make is that you're never going to find a product that is 10 out of 10 that is perfect in every shape or form. But what you can find through hard work and determination is a product that does tick many of the essential boxes and it ticks some of the nice to have boxes. So in this video, we're going to be covering what those essential items are and what the nice to have items are. Um, but before we kick off into that, I kind of just wanted to put everything into context by talking about the iPhone, right? So the iPhone is the number one best-selling phone in the world. And to if you were to say to somebody, do you think it's a perfect product? Do you think it's 10 out of 10? Do you know what the answer would be? It would be no. If you ask me what I think of the iPhone, I'd say, well, it's good enough, but there's many things wrong with it. The battery life is poor. It sometimes freezes. You can't have the full functionality that you'd get with like an Android phone. Um, lots of other different things. But that doesn't impact my choice in choosing it and in buying it and actually enjoying having it. And that's the mentality that you need to get into when you're doing your product research and you're thinking about whether the product that you found is suitable enough to sell with Amazon FBA and to sell to customers out there in the UK. Don't start your product research or don't do product research with the mentality that is I'm gonna find a perfect product, I'm gonna find 10 out of 10 product, and anything else is not gonna settle. Because I'm promising you now, as somebody that has coached hundreds of people and just seen thousands of people posting in the Facebook groups about the challenge of product research, that is the number one mistake that people make. It's they go into the product research stage of their Amazon FBA journeys with the mentality of, I'm not gonna settle for anything less than 10 out of 10. And they're finding good products, really good products. I get so many good products run past me and I say, yep, I think this is really good. Just make sure you thought of this and that. And then, you know, a couple of months later, I'll check up on the person or the student or whatever. And they'll say, oh, I decided not to do that product because it didn't have this or it didn't do that. And I'm just like, that, that you shouldn't have let that put you off from selling this product. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to cover the things that I think are important that are essential to have when you're selling a product with Amazon FBA. And then we're also gonna cover the different things that are they're nice to have, but absolutely should not put you off um, if you find a product that you think looks quite good and it doesn't have it. In my view, when you're doing your product research, what I think is important to be doing is making sure that the product that you found ticks like the essential boxes and it ticks some of the nice to have boxes. It doesn't need to tick them all. Basically, you want to find a product to sell with Amazon FBA that gives you confidence. You're never gonna find a product that gives you 100% confidence and you're like, this is zero risk. It's not gonna happen because that's just business, right? Just to get, kind of give you another example. So in March, just down the road from me, uh, a new coffee shop opened and the guy that owned it did tons of market research. He you know, was making sure that he found the right location, he was offering the right coffee, he did absolutely everything that he could and he opened his shop. And do you know what happened? A week later he had to shut because of the coronavirus lockdown. That is just a risk that he had to accept when he opened a business, right? And it is no different to Amazon FBA. There's always gonna be an element of risk, something that you just can't predict or account for. So. What I think is important to bear in mind, uh, I think that's important to bear in mind when you're doing your product research, that you need to find a product that gives you confidence, but just remember, you're never gonna find a product that ticks all the boxes and that gives you 100% confidence. You need to accept that element of risk because 
this is business and you're an entrepreneur and that's what we do, right? So what we're gonna do now is I wanna cover through the different items that are, in my view are essential for a product to have. There's not actually too many, it's kind of just three or four things. And then we're gonna cover some additional things that I think are nice to have for a product. If you can find a product that has them, great, but it's not a game changer. It's not game over if you find a product that doesn't have those things. And I'm hoping that by doing that, it's gonna help you guys with your product research to get into that frame of mind that you know, when you're doing your research and you're looking for a product, you don't need to be looking for something that ticks all of the boxes. Okay, so let's start off with the items that I think are essential that a product needs to have if you're gonna be a success with Amazon FBA. So the first one, and this is something I've referred to on a previous video, is you need to ensure that the product that you're looking to sell actually works and it does the feature that it's intended to do. And I spoke about this in a previous video where I mentioned things like um, insect repellents and product and uh, a dog barking collar, products that you know are a bit subjective. So um, in my view, those products don't really work and that's why typically people that sell them don't really succeed. So I would say that is essential. That's something that you absolutely need to make sure your product has in that it actually works. There's no point spending however much money on a product that when you get it or when you start selling it, customers are unhappy, they ask for refunds and they give you one star reviews. So that is the most important thing. Make sure the product works. The second thing is obviously you need to make sure that the product that you're going to sell is profitable. We're not doing this for free. We're certainly not gonna be doing it to make a loss. So that I would say is essential to make sure when you're doing your research. And for me, a healthy profit margin is anything over 30% before advertising costs. And there's no excuse for not knowing your pro profit margin. I, I give you guys a free profit calculator tool on this channel. Um, you've got all the facilities available to you. You can ask your supplier, Amazon gives you all their fees. You've got everything to be able to calculate what your profit margin is. So if you find a product that is low on profit margin, then that's when you can say, no, this one's not worth it. So that's number two. And then number three, this again is essential for me. You need to make sure that there's actually sales for the product that you're looking to sell. So what I typically do as a rule of thumb, what I say to my students is, if you're looking to sell in a niche, you need to make sure that at least five sellers are making good amount of sales. There's no point going into a niche if it's just one seller that is doing well and everyone else is selling really poorly. So those three, I would say, are my absolute essentials, 100%. If you find a product that doesn't have those three, then I would leave it. It's not worth it and because the risk is too high. I was talking earlier about risk, that we have to accept risk, absolutely, but there are things that we can do to mitigate that risk, to reduce it, and these three are really important in doing that. So those are my three essential. Now we're gonna start working towards the items that are like less essential, more nice to have. So the next one for me is it's not seasonal or a fad. Personally, I would avoid a product that is seasonal, but if you find something that you think that looks pretty good and it would sell really well in the summer months, then by all means, you know, consider it, but just kind of take into um, account that the, the sales might not be as good in the winter months. For example, you know, I've seen people, plenty of people make a ton of money selling like snorkels and beach gear and stuff like that. And they're fine with the fact that they sell a load in summer and sell less in winter. So that's just something to take into account. Um, not fragile or heavy. Again, that's not essential. It's just a nice to have. If it is heavy or bulky or slightly fragile, you just have to make sure that your supplier packs it extra well and that you ship by sea. So again, that's not something to put you off. And that again is something that I've had students kind of email me about. They found a great product and then they've said, oh, I changed my mind because it was too big. And I'm just like, well, you know, you can you can go by the sea method. Um, so that's another one that's nice to have. Um, then we've got, have there been many new sellers of this product in the last six months? So again, this is quite a big one that trips people up. I've done a video on this before where I spoke about understanding whether a niche is saturated. And I spoke about how if a niche has more than six new sellers or something like that in the last six months, that might indicate that it is a saturated niche. And I think that again has tripped a lot of people up because they see when they're doing their research that there have been more than six sellers and then straight away they're like, no, I'm not doing it. When really it's just something to take into account and it just basically means that 
If there are more than six sellers in the past six months, you just need to make sure that you are smashing it out of the park with your product choice and that you're actually going to be offering something different to all of those other guys. Um, the next nice to have is are there many sellers with less than 100 reviews? Now, historically, people on YouTube have always said, if a niche has got more than 100 reviews on average, then leave it. There's no opportunity, blah, blah, blah. And I'm telling you now, as an experienced seller, somebody that's been selling for nearly three years now, that is rubbish, okay? I have launched in niches where the average reviews have been like 500 plus. And I'm not saying that you're gonna have 100% success by doing that, but I'm saying, of course, it is po possible to launch in a niche where there are competitors with a high amount of reviews. Again, it just comes down to, are you actually able to offer something different than what these guys are offering? Are you able to improve upon the product? And then finally, another nice to have is, can the product be gifted? Would it, be make, would it make a good gift at Christmas, for birthdays? That in no shape or form is an essential item to have. It's just a nice to have. So now that we can see all of these items here, I'm kind of hoping that this has made it a bit clearer in your minds about how to judge a product when you find one and how you should think of it when you're assessing the level of risk and whether it makes a suitable product. Just keep those top three items in the back of your mind at all times and always make sure that your product has those items and anything else, if it has it, it's a bonus, right? But what is most important when you're doing your product research, the most important thing to ensure is that you're able to differentiate and offer something different that nobody else is offering, or at least you're able to improve upon the offer. And that is, again, something that I've done with all of my products. I've always made sure I've had a different, slightly different angle to other people, whether it be a different model, different functionality, different features, whatever. I've always ensured that my product has had that. And I genuinely think that that's one of the main reasons that I've been able to achieve success with every product that I've launched. And guys, just to be clear, the products that I do sell with Amazon FBA, they are in no shape or form perfect products, okay? They do tick the essential um, boxes here that I've run through, but there's also boxes that they don't tick. At the end of the day, I did my diligence, my research into each of those, and I felt confident about the things that I saw with the product, and I made sure that I'd at least come at it with a different angle, I'd improved upon the product somehow, or I included something with the product that others didn't, and that's how I was able to achieve success. So I hope this video has now helped in your minds how to approach product research and to basically not fall into that trap of looking for a perfect product. I'm telling you now, that's the number one reason that so many people start product research. They end up doing it for months and months and months, and then they just give up because they're just looking for something that doesn't exist. So just to conclude on this video, the one thing you need to do is make sure that the product actually does what it's intended to do, it's profitable, and that there are sales are there. And then the other items are very much nice to have. But ultimately, you just need to find a product that you're confident in and that you think you can add your personal touch on in order to achieve success with Amazon FBA. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video, guys. If you have, please remember to subscribe if you're not already subscribed and give me a thumbs up. And I will see you next time for another Amazon FBA video.